This is Pukeology Podcast, where science meets your hilarious puke stories and the tips and tricks to stop that up chuckle that you need. You never know what's going to spew out of her mouth. Here's my mama, Dr. Puke Nemo. What does it feel like when your water breaks? Is it like the TV shows where a huge gush of water comes pouring out? Or is it more like a slow trickle? You know, like when you laugh or jump on a trampoline after having your first kid. Your favorite pregnancy doctor, me, will tell you all about the famous water breaking, all in today's Pregnancy Pecology podcast, episode 81, What Does It Feel Like When Your Water Breaks? Do you want no more morning sickness, pregnancy nausea, or how about no more headaches or migraines? Visit our sponsor, nomonausea.com, the only natural way to instantly stop your worst nausea, vomiting, or headaches during pregnancy now and get 25% off with the code PUKE25. That's P-U-K-E-2-5. Or just place the Nomonausea ban on your baby registry for your delivery bag at Bye Bye Baby or get it shipped for free in just two days as an Amazon Prime vendor. And you know you can always find them, No More Nausea Kids and No More Sleepless Nights Kids for your little ones, also on Amazon and at now at your local Walmart stores. P.S. Ladies, the No More Sleepless Nights Kids actually works for women with small wrists, so you can get a great night's sleep like your kid does. Now, do you want to hear some pregnancy humor that may just make you want to pee your pants? Like you don't have to pee all the time anyway with hilarious stories like nursing profession of pukers, biology of barf, and recycling barf eat it now or later. If you want no more, if you want to learn more about your pregnancy, humor and knowledge is the key to help you survive these nine months. And just know we're in this together. Today, you will learn the science behind what causes your water to break, what color is your amniotic fluid, and what are the complications around water breaking if it happens too early. Plus, get some helpful hints from your best friend, tips on how to save your car, furniture, or mattress, or other expensive things from having that large post-water breaking cleaning bill. All coming up next, right now. The Science of Puke, Pukeology. So what causes the water to break? Well, one of the biggest worries about any pregnant mother is breaking of her water. It's crucial to know the signs of water breaking and what to occur when it happens. So a lot of times we women want to control everything, but honestly, it's up to your baby and your body. Water breaking is an excellent sign that you're about to go into labor, although it doesn't always mean that the baby is ready to come out. Let me explain. Sometimes your water can break too early due to other causes, and it's vital to be observed when that happens with your water break, and we'll get into that more in a little bit. Even though your water has not broken, it will differ from other women. So again, some women will feel a lot of water and others will feel a little bit. So not every woman experiences the same flow during your water break. And there's also the third type of woman like myself who is induced. And when you're induced, you can get your epidural, which I highly recommend before that they break your water. And when they do that, again, you won't have that feeling because think about it. It's kind of like they take a big hook and they hook it in there to splash out your water. Now, what causes your water to break? Breaking of the water during pregnancy can also be referred to as a rupture of membranes, but everyone thinks it's like a gallon of water. That's not true. It's only about two and a half to three cups of fluid that's actually emptied when the amniotic sac is ruptured, but the flow of liquid cannot be controlled. Some women feel like a trickle of pee, while others feel like three cups of water were just dumped onto their underwear. And if you don't wear underwear, I would highly recommend doing so, especially in the last trimester, because you just never know. My babies were both sent their eviction notice at 37 weeks, whereas others carry until 41 weeks. So again, it's about your body and your baby. 
The young baby is usually encircled in a sac, which is known as an amniotic sac, which this contains fluid, also known as amniotic fluid. I always like to call it the baby's, you know, like bathtub or the baby's hot tub because it is warm, the same temperature as your mother, right, as the mom, and it's filled with fluid. Now, when the baby is about to be born or during pregnancy, the water actually will break. So the amniotic fluid will flow down through the vagina. The water breaks because the baby is putting too much pressure on it. If your water breaks early, it can be due to other causes that weaken the amniotic sac, such as infection. So now the amniotic fluid is depleted if you are not in the best form of nutrition. So again, you have to make sure that you're constantly staying hydrated. We talk about this all the time. That is the number one cause of why pregnant women, especially in their second trimester, get these headaches or migraines that they otherwise wouldn't have. So make sure that you're constantly staying hydrated. And if you're curious as to why you're getting second trimester headaches and migraines, you can actually go over to a great podcast. That one is... How to Cure a Migraine, episode eight. So, or you can just go visit our sponsor, nomomigraine.com. It's a natural way to help moms through their second trimester and third trimester headaches and migraines. I digress, let's go back. Sometimes your water can break when the contraction has started, although it can, you have to remember. So again, think of it as a forced amount of pressure on a water balloon, okay? Some children can squish it, right? And it kind of changes shape and form, But when you end up putting too much pressure on it, boom, it breaks. Other times, the balloon strength is actually weakened. So meaning, let's say that the kid was playing with it and pulling it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, which would weaken that actual, the covering of the balloon. So as soon as they go to squish it, boom, it ends up breaking. Or the third reason is there's too much amniotic fluid, and this can also happen as well, where your body overproduces this, usually... There's a a big term for it, so I'm not going to sit here and give you medical jargon. But again, when your amniotic sac has a high or too much fluid, that can also cause it to break, just like a regular water balloon. So sometimes the water can break when the contraction has started, but if anybody has actually experienced a C-section, which I've had one of each, a vaginal delivery and a C-section. In a C-section, I always tell the moms, listen for the suction. When they're sucking out a bunch of fluids, that means that the baby is really close because it has to get to the amniotic fluid, bust that little bag of water before they're able to pull the baby out during the C-section. Now, it is very rare when the wa- when your water doesn't break and the baby is actually born in the enclosed amniotic sac. This is actually called an encaudal birth, which It's very, very rare. There are some really cool pictures. I've personally never seen it as a physician. Um, But again, there are some that have actually been annotated. Again, what will happen? That is ruptured. And then as it is ruptured, the baby then takes their first nice big breath. So what will happen when your water actually breaks? So the amniotic sac that's filled with that amniotic fluid, like we talked about, ruptures at the beginning of labor. This is known as your water breaking. Now, when your water breaks before labor starts, it's actually known as premature rupture of membranes. And remember, labor doesn't equal contractions. So you can have contractions just like you can have fake labor, which is Braxton Hicks contractions. And I talk about a Braxton Hicks contractions like honestly way too much. But if you're curious about what those are, the fake labor contractions, go over to episode 64, what causes Braxton Hicks contractions. Now, if you're experiencing true labor, it is when you are contracting and dilating. So there are two things. And once your water breaks, you've got to get that baby out within 24 hours so that there isn't a risk of infection. That's the reason why mamas, they're going to constantly take your temperature after your water has been ruptured. Another question is if you go into triage and they say, hey, do you think your water broke? And you're like, I don't really know. They're going to ask you, when did you start feel like you peed on yourself within the last couple of hours? And the reason why is because we need to be able to track how far along or how many hours it's been. Remember, anything over 24 hours has an increased risk of infection because the baby is basically not being protected by their nice big hot tub or big water balloon anymore. 
So when your water breaks, you usually experience a feeling of wetness or your vagina or in your perineum, which is just basically like going the the area going up towards your butthole, which is clear or pale yellow fluid. All right. So this is really important. Okay. So again, remember that if it's a lot, okay, as pregnant women, we all know that we kind of pee on ourselves at some points in time, but it's usually thicker. Okay. And it smells like sex. So I think that's like the best way of describing it. When you have that, it's like a a musk. It's not like a bad smell. It's not like a fish smell. It's like sex, like that, like musky type of smell. All right. And again, it is clear and or pale yellow fluid, not bright yellow, which is pee, right? But pale yellow, almost clear. And it's got a, a more viscous feel to it. So the best way I can describe that is lube. Okay, lube versus um, pee. (laughs) All right, the water can either gush out or trickle down. It might feel like you have unknowingly peed yourself or peed your panties because the amniotic fluid appears like urine due to the mix of liquid with the actual baby's urine. It might have a small amount of blood, which is also very normal. And we actually call that whenever this the mucus plug falls out or your bloody show, you will see the difference. It looks like a snot of blood. That is your mucus plug that has been bloop, plopped off. And guess what? Your cervix are saying, hey guys, I'm ready to be opened. So again, Most women, it is the most amazing thing in labor, watching a woman's vagina literally be able to give birth to a baby because, again, the elasticity and the ability to be able to stretch. So contractions will begin after your water has broke much more regular and much more severe. And if you're a person who is, you know, goes to a hospital and you're noticing your contractions aren't as strong, the nurses in labor and delivery will probably ask you, hey, we need to start running some Pitocin because we need to get the baby out so that your contractions will be stronger, more forceful, and come back to back. So when they say that, if you are interested in getting an epidural, I highly recommend that you call one of us (laughs) in order to place your epidural. All right, guys. So how can you be sure that your water has broken? Well, it's a little bit more more complicated to distinguish between amniotic fluid and urine, especially if you experience only a small amount of water. When you're unsure that your water has broken, head to the hospital for more assistance. The doctor, like myself, will examine you to confirm if your amniotic fluid is just leaking or if it is urine. And in some cases, an ultrasound will be done to verify its findings. Labor can be induced if you are not in labor because the rupture of membranes is early and there's a high chance of developing infection. Now, for people who are undergoing um, early rupture of membranes, there are actually new things that can be done um, to where they will put you on bed rest, ladies. I hate to tell you, but there's actually like a a system that will give you more amniotic fluid. So kind of think of it like anything that you lose will be recycled back out um, so that we can keep the baby in there longer in order to be able to give the baby much more steroids to help to strengthen their lungs. And in doing so, they will be ready for the outside world, even if it comes earlier than expected. All right, that was a lot. It was a lot about pee and amniotic fluids. Let's get to some funny stories to make you quite possibly pee your pants. Growing up on a Tuesday? One puke story. Ah, ah, ah. I worked in in a nursing home straight out of high school, and one of the residents had a serious bowel infection, making her poo smell absolutely rancid. Three of us went in to change her with masks on, only to find the entire bed was covered in poop. My pregnant co-worker immediately started vomiting in her mask, and that set the rest of us off, vomiting as we scrambled to get the mask off and find the nearest bathroom. By the time it was all said and done, we were covered in vomit and poop. I was never so glad to throw away a pair of scrubs. All right. That was super gross at Literai. Thank you for that puke story. A couple of weeks ago, I was in my biology class at my university. My professor walked in looking like she was going to puke. So being a considerate student, I asked her if she was feeling okay. They... (laughs) 
He answered, not really. I might have to go home after this class. So anyway, she started the lecture and all of a sudden she started a, she started to vomit pink colored chunky liquid. Obviously the class started to say things like gross. She's blowing chunks everywhere. What a sicko is going on. We tried to get her out of the door, but it was stuck. She threw up and began time and time and time again to throw up green bile. She left the class and the other professors opened the door trying to find out what was the commotion. Behold, the professor was throwing up in the hallway. Oh, poor thing. And nobody knew because she was only five weeks pregnant. At bio student, thanks for sharing. I bet you you'll remember that. Be a little more considerate when you yourself experience morning sickness. Once I was at home by myself during my second trimester when my hubby was on a business trip and I ate exactly what the baby was craving, chicken. I threw up and it was creepy. Then I went back at at it and ate it. P.S. Vomit tastes like chicken when you put salt on it before eating. Oh my gosh, that's so gross. Do you have a hilarious puke story? that you just can't wait to share, send it to me. Pukeology, P-U-K-E-O-L-O-G-Y at nomonausea.com, N-O-M-O-N-A-U-S-E-A.com or tweet me at Pukeology so we can all have a good laugh. (laughs) Tips and tricks to stop the up chuckle that you need. So how to clean up after your water breaks? I'm just going to tell you, just don't have the cleanup at all. Number one, puppy training pads. Yes, I am dead serious. Puppy training pads are amazing. Or if you've had a baby in the past, they actually give you these great, they're called chucks or these great pads. Take them with you. Literally, they use them in the hospital and they're not going to reuse them. Grab them, take them home with you. You will be so happy. Another thing is grab a waterproof mattress cover for your third trimester. You're going to need it anyway. And if you are suckered into having your little one sleep with you, it is literally not too much time before they will pee themselves on the bed sleeping next to you. All right, a couch cover is something that's interesting or find like your favorite spot or place on the couch and just keep like an extra blanket there just sitting so that every time you sit down, just in case you do have your water breaking and then leave an extra towel in your car or put those puppy training pads or things like that there. Uh, everybody, all these women are like, oh, you don't want to put on pads. Honestly, pads are so bulky and they're so annoying. And imagine trying to walk around like that in the last couple, you know, weeks of your pregnancy, that would just drive me bananas. I would feel like I was having a period for weeks and that's not something I would want to do. So I always say protect your expensive stuff. Um, even though it will come out with dry cleaning, FYI. All right, so what happens if your water does break too early? Now, if your water breaks before the 37th week of gestation, it is known as preterm or pre-labor rupture of membranes. PPROM is what we like to call it. The following are the risk factors for your water breaking too early. Number one, a premature history of rupture of rupture in your previous pregnancy. Number two, intra-amniotic infection. That's what we were talking about. The infection like weakens the lining. Number three, vaginal discharge of blood in the second and third trimesters. Four, smoking. I don't think I have to tell you, but just was with another pregnant woman the other day and she was still smoking and she had a very small baby. And guess why? It's all brought down to smoking. So again, Quit the habit. It's good for you. It's good for the baby. I, I'm not going to say any more and I'm jumping off my soapbox. Number five, using an unprescribed drug during pregnancy. Number six, malnutrition due to poor feeding that can lead to the baby um, and yourself being underweight. And seven, incompetent cervix. And this is what we say, what we call getting a cerclage. You know, that's something that I need to do another podcast on is what is a cervical cerclage? Basically, there's a procedure that if your cervix is incompetent, you basically kind of like sew it shut to make sure that the baby doesn't fall out of your cervix. 
There you go. I will do a whole thing on a cervical cerclage and being able to explain to you why we do a spinal and all that other good stuff at another date. Now, the complications which appear um, include both maternal and fetal infections, placental separation, and also umbilical cord problems can happen. There's also a high chance of a baby being born prematurely if the premature rupture of membranes happens. Now, when you're around 34 weeks of pregnancy and you experience your water breakage, induction of labor may be necessary to avoid infection. And if there is no sign of infection, pregnancy is allowed to continue and monitor closely if it happens before 34 weeks. That is, from 24 to 34 weeks, the mother is given antibiotics to cover the infection and the delivery is delayed. Remember I was telling you, they will pump you full of more of this fluid inside your amniotic fluid and keep you on bed rest so that the baby doesn't come out. Thank you so much for listening to Pregnancy Pecology Podcast Episode 81. What does it feel like when my water breaks? Now you know the science behind What is the amniotic fluid? What color is it? What does it smell like? How do you know if it's breaking and if you can or cannot control? And plus, what are some really great tips and tricks to make sure that you don't have a really super high dry cleaning bill thereafter? If you like Pregnancy Pecology Podcast or if you like me, give me five-star ratings and hearts for likes. Don't forget to download this episode, but more importantly, share it with all your prego friends. Thanks again for listening to your favorite pregnancy doc, me, Dr. Pugnamo to Pregnancy Pecology Podcast, episode 81. What does it feel like when my water break? See you guys in two weeks. Pugology Podcast, edutainment at its finest.